Hey, <laughs> good morning. The rain stopped just long enough for me not to ruin my phone <laughs> while I uh, record this. I got up this morning, it was raining like crazy. And uh, by no coincidence, uh, I turned on um, my YouTube feed. I have my little favorites and up popped um, the famous poem from uh, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Uh, it's entitled A Rainy Day, and I think we all know the famous or infamous line, depending on your perspective. Into each life, some rain must fall. Holy mackerel. Great metaphor for today and for this season of our country and of our world. We've all had rainy days. But I don't think we've ever had one giant rainy season together. And um, Longfellow says it quite nicely in his, uh, and eloquently in his poem. And then I read up about it. It turns out that what inspired that poem was uh, his first wife apparently died uh, during a miscarriage. And um, he fell into a deep, deep depression as anyone, any human being would and uh but it inspired him to write that poem and think of all the i think of all the people even us right now it's given hope and encouragement to as we go through this gigantic global um rainy day and it made me think of uh my service what i do for other people what i can do for other people uh what i do for others is what i do for myself rests on the golden rule. I think we all know that. Uh, Friday, I was driving down to my sister's house and uh, I saw a driver on the throughway driving erratically, impeding the flow of traffic, doing uh, 30, 35 on the throughway when everyone else is going just below the speed of light <laughs> to make it worse. He was in the passing lane. Well, actually, he was in all lanes. He went from the shoulder to the passing lane, uh, to the right-hand lane, lane number one, lane number two, whatever you want to call it. And um, his wipers were on, it wasn't raining, and he was obviously in distress. So initially, you know, you could think, well, this guy's drunk. But he almost caused so many accidents. And I'm watching this guy, and people are driving past him, and they're honking their horn, and they're flipping him off. And I go, oh, my God. God, I need to, I need to watch this guy. I followed him for about 15 minutes. I put my flashers on, and then he tried to make a U-turn on the throughway into oncoming traffic. And I just, I knew I had to do something, so I cut him off. I stopped him from turning. He's an older gentleman, and uh, maybe 66, 67. Well, you know. Not elderly, but I said, uh, give me your car keys. You're not able to drive this vehicle. And he complied immediately. I was shocked, and the troopers were on their way. And the troopers showed up. I handed them the keys. I had videotape of him. And I said, you know, good luck. I didn't know what it was. I just I didn't want to get involved, but I did want to make sure that people were safe. And the next day, this trooper... Trooper Jason Borgen, thank you very much. Trooper Borgen, thank you. Trooper Borgen called me to say he wasn't impaired. He was a dementia patient who had packed up his belongings and decided to leave and did not know where he was going. He actually had uh, information on him and said, if I'm found, please return me to whatever it was. So he said to me, he said, thank you. He said, you you helped us, he called it a file six missing person. He said, helped us find a missing person in the making. They were about to report him missing. He packed up all his belongings and he didn't know where he was going. But I was amazed at how many people, not just drove by, but were screaming at this man. Screaming and, and flipping him off. They had no idea what he was. He was obviously in distress. 
And I thought about that trooper and everybody in law enforcement who does this for, for a living. And um, in my participation is part-time, but you know, the men and women that do this for a living, this is what they do. This is 99% of what they do. They're out there helping people. We can take a lead from them, I think. We can. There's so many opportunities to help on a daily basis. They might be small things. They might seem insignificant, but they're not. They're not. That was 10, 15 minutes out of my day. And this man was returned to his family. And um, who knows, maybe even uh, saved his life. This struggle right now is incredibly difficult for all of us. If we can find, not if, let's, let's help each other. Let's take the time. We're all hurting. But you gotta admit, it feels great when you do something to help somebody else. When this trooper called me back, we spoke for about 20 minutes, and I could hear the enthusiasm and the excitement, and even the love in his voice for having been part of a, a rescue, if you will. Find somebody to rescue today. Maybe it's you. Rescue yourself. It felt good. It feels good. You won't have to look far. And um, when you do, share it. Share it. I think people now, more than ever, we, we, need, to, we need to start looking at, at our common ground and sharing the goodness, our innate goodness that we have. So I hope, hope you find a happy rescue today. <laughs> Is there such a thing? <laughs> I just made that up. All right. <laughs> I'm going to call this one a, a happy rescue. And thank you, uh, Trooper Borgen. These men and women deserve medals almost on a daily basis. Well, I'm, I'm pinning one on you, Trooper. I'm pinning one on you. All right, everybody. Remember... Every life, little rain, little rain must fall. Okay, does it have to be a fucking hurricane? <laughs>